Good day, everyone. Today, I'm going to discuss another method of apportionment called the Jefferson's method. Now, at the end of this discussion, the students, so you, are expected to compare and contrast the Hamilton's method and the Jefferson's method. Follow the steps of the Jefferson's method in solving apportionment problems as demonstrated, and appreciate the use of Jefferson's method in solving apportionment problems. Now, what is Jefferson's method? So before we dig in into the Jefferson's method of apportionment, let's know first who the proponent of this method was. So Thomas Jefferson proposed this method. He was the third U.S. president and the author of the first apportionment plan used in the United States. Now, he was also one of the most influential statesmen in the formation of government and was acknowledged as the primary author of the Declaration of Independence. Now, what are the steps of the Jefferson's method? Now, the steps of the Je Jefferson's method is similar to the Hamilton's method. First, we have to compute the standard divisor. So, in computing the standard divisor, let's simply divide the total population by the number of people to a portion. The second step is to compute the standard quota for each state. So, in, co in computing the standard quota, we just have to divide the population of each state by the standard divisor. Now, the third step is to round the standard quotas down and add these quotas to find the total number of allocation. So, this answer will always be less than or equal to the desired total number of allocation. So, take note, when we round down numbers, for example, 46.128, that becomes 46. So, we disregard the fractional part. Another, 55.673, that becomes 55. So, in other words, we will simply consider the whole part and we will not consider the fractional part, okay? Now, step 4, if the total from step 3 is less than the desired total number of allocation, then we will reduce the divisor and recalculate the quota and allocation. So, this divisor we end up using is called the modified standard divisor. Let's take note that if the number of representatives obtained does not sum up to what is desired, then we will pick another modified standard divisor and we will repeat steps 1, 2, and 3. Take note also that the modified standard divisor is chosen by trial and error so that the sum of the lower quotas is equal to the desired total number of allocation. This modified standard divisor is lesser than the standard divisor and is not necessarily a whole number. Okay? Now, let's try this example for you to understand the steps of the Jefferson's method. Suppose that 20 members of a committee from five European countries are selected according to the populations of the five countries, as shown in the table. So we have here France, Germany, Italy, Spain, Belgium, with their corresponding or, or respective population. And the total is 268,730,000. So the first step is to compute the standard divisor. So let's divide the total number of population by the number of people to a portion, to be apportioned. So we have here from here, we have the total is 268,730,000 and the committee members that will be apportioned is 20. So we have 268,730,000 divided by 20 and that's 13,436,500. So this is our standard divisor. Now step two, let's compute the standard quota for each state. So let's divide the population of each state by the standard quota. So we have here 66,550,000 divided by 13,436,500 and that's approximately 4.953. So let's just limit our answer to three decimal places for convenience. So in Germany, we have 80,850,000 divided by 13,436,500. That's approximately 6.017. So in Italy, let's divide 61,860,000 divided by 13,436,500 and that's approximately 4.604. And in Spain, we have 48,150,000 divided by 13,436,500 that's approximately 3.584. So in Belgium, let's divide 11,320,000 
by 13,436,500, so that's approximately 0 0.842. So again, let's limit our, our answer or the quotient or the standard quota to three decimal places only. Now in step three, let's round the standard quotas down and add these quotas to find the desired total number of allocations. So we have here, in France, we have four. In Germany, we have six. In Italy, we have four. In Spain, we have three. And in Belgium, we have zero. So again, let's just consider the whole number of the cushion. So let's disregard the fractional part. The total of these members is 17. Now, what have you observed? Have you already arrived or achieved the desired total number of committee members to be apportioned? So no, since we need or we have to apportion 20 committee members. So since we have not obtained the desired total number of committee members to be apportioned, let's proceed to step four, which is to reduce the divisor and recalculate the quota and allocation. So in this step, we will be choosing or picking another standard divisor called as the modified standard divisor. So in this case, we will use 12 million. So remember that the modified standard divisor is chosen by trial and error. So it does not have any formula. So you just have to choose your own standard divisor that will satisfy the desired number of people to be apportioned and let's recalculate the quota and allocation so let's recalculate so let's do step two again so let's compute the standard quota for each state considering or using the new standard divisor which is the modified standard divisor so in france we have 66 million five hundred fifty thousand divided by 12 million so that's our modified standard divisor and that's approximately 5.546 so in germany let's divide 80 million eight hundred fifty thousand divided by 12 million, that's approximately 6.738. So in Italy, let's divide 61,860,000 divided by 12 million, so that's 5.155. In Spain, let's divide 48,150,000 divided by 12 million, that's approximately 4.013. And in Belgium, let's divide 11,320,000 divided by 12 million, and that's approximately 0. 948. Now let's proceed to step three, which is to run the standard quotas down and add these quotas. So we have here in France, we have five. So in Germany, we have six. In Italy, we have five. So in Spain, we have four. And in Belgium, we have zero. So again, let's consider the whole number only, not the not including the fractional part. So the total is 5 plus 6 plus 5 plus 4, that's 20. So have already obtained the desired number of committee members to be apportioned? Yes, we have already obtained the total number of committee members to be apportioned. But try to, uh, what have you observed? The committee members in Belgium, it's just zero, right? So we have not allocated at least one committee member in Belgium. So that is also one of the disadvantages of the Jefferson's method class because it may violate the quota rule. So when we talk about the quota rule, it states that the number of representatives apportioned to a state is the standard quota or one more than the standard quota. So it may also violate the uh, Jefferson's method. And in the case of our sample problem in here in Belgium, we have not allocated any committee member. So that seems to be unfair in the part of Belgium, right? Which is not being allocated with at least one committee member. So that's it. That's the Jefferson's method of apportionment. Now, what is the difference between the Jefferson's method and the Hamilton's method class? Now, I have here a table for you to be able to compare these two methods. So in terms of the divisor, the Hamilton's method uses the standard divisor. Well, the Jefferson's method uses the modified standard divisor. And in terms of apportionment, the Hamilton's method distributes additional seats one at a time until all items are distributed. So remember the Hamilton's method when the total number or when we when the total number of the standard quotas does not sum up to what is desired. So let's add additional seats one at a time. So we will be adding additional state uh, seats depending or based on 
the largest decimal place or largest fractional parts. Well, in Jefferson's method, if the desired number of, of people to be apportioned is not obtained, then we will pick another modified standard divisor. And let's repeat the steps 1, 2, and 3. Take note also that the Jefferson's method favors the larger states. Now, let's try this another example for you to understand the concept much better. So let's use the Jefferson's method to distribute the 200 calculators to the five high schools based on the number of advanced math students. Now we have here the five high schools, L.C. Allen, Maria Carrillo, Montgomery, Pinner, and Santa Rosa with the respective number of advanced math students. So the total number of advanced math students is 612. Now first, what's the first step? Let's compute the standard divisor. So 612 divided by 200. So 612 because that's their total number of advanced math, student, math students and 200 because that's the number of calculators to be distributed or to be apportioned. Now, 612 divided by 200, that's 3.06. Now, let's proceed to step 2. Let's compute the standard quota for each state. So, we have here 72 divided by 3.06. So, that's approximately 23.529. In Maria Carrillo, we have 131 divided by 3.06. That's 42.8. 10 or simply 81. In Montgomery, 243 divided by 3.06, so that's approximately 79.412. In Pinner, we have 95 divided by 3.06, that's approximately 31.046. And in Santa Rosa, that's 71, so divided by 3.06, that's approximately 23.203. Now, let's round the standard quotas down and add these quotas to find the desired total number of allocation. So let's round the standard quotas down. So from approximately 23.529, so that becomes simply 23. So in Maria Carrillo, that becomes 42. In Montgomery, that becomes 79. In Biner, that becomes 31. In Santa Rosa, that becomes 23. So let's add this total number of calculators. We have here 198. So what have you observed? Okay, we still lack two calculators to be apportioned. Now, since the total desired number of calculators to be apportioned is not obtained, so we will proceed to step four, which is to reduce the divisor or the standard divisor and recalculate the quota and the allocation. So let's try 3.01 as our modified standard divisor. Again, our modified standard divisor class is chosen by trial and error. So we are the ones who will decide on what modified standard divisor we are going to use. So it's your choice as long as it will satisfy the total number or the desired total number of calculators or people to be apportioned. Now, let's try 3.01 as our modified standard divisor. So let's recalculate. Let's recompute the standard quota in step two. So 72 divided by 3.01. So we will now be using the new standard divisor or the modified standard divisor. So that's approximately uh, 72 divided by 3.01, that's approximately 23.920 or simply 92. In Maria Carrillo, 131 divided by 3.01, that's approximately 43.522. In Montgomery, 243 divided by 3.01, that's approximately 80.731. In Pinner, 95 divided by 3.01, that's approximately 31.561. And in Santa Rosa, we have... 71 divided by 3.01, that's approximately 23.588. Now, let's proceed to the step 3, which is to round the standard quotas down. So, in L.C. Allen, the calculators would be 23. Let's round the standard quotas or the quotient. So, in Maria Carrillo, that becomes 43. So, in Montgomery, that becomes 80. In Pinner, that becomes 31. And in Santa Rosa, that becomes 23. So, again, we are just basing this uh, allocation from the quotient. So we are just considering the whole part and we disregard the fractional part. So let's add them. 23 plus 43 plus 80 plus 31 plus 23, that's 200. So we have already obtained the desired total number of calculators to be apportioned. And this will serve as our final allocation. Now let's try to compare the initial versus the final apportionment 
of the calculator. So from initial, we have here in the LC Allen 23, and final, it, be, it's, it is still 23. In Maria Carillo, from, from 42, it becomes 43. So in Montgomery, from 79, it becomes 80. From Pinner, from 31, it, be, it is still 31. And so with the calculators in Santa Rosa, so 23 in initial and 23 also in final. So what have you observed from the initial and the final apportionment of calculators? So as what you have seen, uh, the Maria Carrillo and Montgomery in terms of their number of advanced math students, so they have the largest or the greatest number of advanced maths math students so 243 and 131 so in their final apportionment so they are also the high schools who receive the additional number of calculators so that is why uh, the jefferson's method of apportionment class is favoring larger states so that's why the, uh, the reason why maria carillo and montgomery receives the additional uh, one calculator for their schools because we are using the Jefferson's method and as what I have presented recently, the Jefferson's method favors the larger states. So that's the reason why. Now, is it worthwhile to learn the Jefferson's method and why? Well, yes, it is worthwhile to learn the Jefferson's method because it offers us another method to apportion or another method of apportionment. We also need to learn this Jefferson's method for us to understand another, or for us to know another apportionment method, which we can use in our apportionment problems. Now, to end this discussion, I am, I will be presenting you this quote from Charles Darwin. He's, he said, and I quote, it is not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent that survives. It is the one that is most adaptable to change. Now, we do not have to be the strongest class. We don't have to be the most intelligent among our classmates or among the people in this world in order for us to survive. We just have to be adaptive to the changes of time. We just have to adapt to the challenges of time and be able to surpass those challenges we just have to keep learning so that at the end of the day we will be able to survive we will be able to fight against the challenges of the time so that's it i hope that you have learned something from this presentation thank you and god bless us all